then you'll know. The Hangout is... We're live! We're live. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi everybody. Out there, my name is uh, Dr. Ben Dolan. I'm a professor of biology at uh, the University of Finley. Sit right back here. Hopefully you're at the right place. Um, so we're here to talk about the biology program at the university, um, some of uh, the, the programs that students get involved in, and I'll help explain uh, what our major entails and different fields you can get involved in. And I'm sitting with two students, um, uh, Kaylee Kenny and, sorry, yeah, I said that right, yeah. and <laughs> Katie Malo, and uh, both are majors here, and Kaylee is graduating in about two weeks, and Katie will be graduating in another year. All goes well. <laughs> I'm sure it will go well. Um, so I'll let them introduce themselves and tell you about their, their career goals and, and their program of study a little bit. Uh, my name is Kaylee Kenny. I'm from Clarkson, Michigan. Um, I'm a biology major, and like you said, I'm graduating in two weeks. Uh, this fall, I'm heading to Liberty University, College of Osteopathic Medicine, where I'm planning on specializing in OBGYN, um, but that's all up in the air still. But yeah, I'm heading to medical school this fall. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is so, um, I'm Katie. I'm a junior here at the university. I transferred in um, from Baldwin Wallace College my freshman year, so this is my second year here. Um, I'm double majoring in biology and animal science pre-vet and minoring in chemistry, and I'm from Ocarver, Ohio. And let's see, um, this summer I have an internship at the Toledo Zoo, so mm -hmm. that's exciting. So come see some awesome birds and maybe me trying to wrangle them. Um, Let's see, I, uh, last summer I worked at African Safari Wildlife Park, so as far as career goals go, I'm kind of planning on working in a zoo, so maybe if my internship goes well, something will kind of lead into that, but everything's still kind of out in the open, but the biology faculty has been really supportive in helping me kind of figure out what I want to do. Okay, Dr. Dolan, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what makes our biology program different, um, the, maybe the diversity of the program, all the different sure. areas that students can go into with your degree. Okay, we have a, a generalized biology program, and uh, so what that means is that we don't have specific concentrations or areas of study within biology. Uh, what we have is a broad range of classes that students can choose from, and so if you're interested in, in medicine, like Kaylee, then you can take courses geared for, for getting you, getting you into to medical school. And if you're interested in, in conservation biology or conservation medicine and those sorts of fields, then um, you can follow the path that, that Katie is following. Or, um, and, and so we, we try to have diverse classes um, for students to choose from so that whatever path you choose to go on, you can um, fill that in with, with courses that will help you reach that goal. Um, and so we, as for students who want to go to medical school, uh, we have classes, um, the, I think the, the typical classes that, that students would take are, are human anatomy and physiology. You would take cell biology, microbiology, uh, cell biology, immunology, and probably epidemiology. What do you think of any of this? Um, yeah, organic chemistry, biochemistry. Okay. <laughs> well, chemistry. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of, yeah, cell, micro. I think, I think we pretty much okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then for, for uh, field biology and conservation biology and those sorts of things, um, we offer ecology, which all of our majors take. Um, I teach conservation biology. And um, when we get a big group of students who are interested, we teach entomology, which is insects. And we have a couple field biology classes, ornithology and um, uh, evolutionary ecology as well. So. So a pretty diverse range of classes to choose from. Uh, the way our major works is that we have a core um, of classes that everyone has to take. Uh, so everyone takes a, a freshman series in biology. It's an introduction to cell and molecular biology. Mm -hmm. And environmental. Oh yeah, that, what is it? Biodiversity, form, and function. Yeah. This is a class yeah. I teach. So. <laughs> So, so the freshmen or um, sometimes sophomores start at that level too. So everyone takes those. Everyone takes genetics. Everyone takes ecology, and everyone takes introduction to research. 
and we have a couple seminar classes for sophomores and for seniors. Um, and then there are courses in chemistry that everyone takes. You end up actually with a chemistry minor. Um, it's all the chemistry you take, you take uh, inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, and biochemistry. And uh, we go through it at a nice pace and don't throw too much at you at once, so it's not too bad. <laughs> and <laughs> they're laughing. It's not too bad. <laughs> um, and uh, all students will take uh, two semesters of physics, uh, a semester of pre-calculus, and statistics. statistics. Um, so after all those core requirements, you get to take about 15 to 16 credit hours in biology of, of courses of your choice. Um, so that's usually three or four lab courses. And so that's where you get to get into your, um, your field of study, whether it's medicine. If, if you're in a pre-vet biology double major, you'll take some of the sim some similar classes that pre-med students take. Um, and then there are field biologies and ecology. Other students interested in lab sciences that take a lot of the genetics and cell biology courses as well. So, so really we like to tailor it to each student um, to make sure you get what you need. So, I don't know if you guys, you talked about the classes you took. Do you want to talk about some of the classes you've taken? Sure. Um, yeah, so I'm taking Dr. Dolan's conservation biology class right now, which kind of gives you a good feel for that whole conservation field, and I, I really enjoy that. So um, I'm planning on kind of tailoring my biology major a little more to those interests. So um, next year I would like to take environmental toxicology. So just kind of, like I said, give me an overall basis of that environmental biology and conservation biology. So. Um, I wish I could talk more in ecology, but that's going to be next semester. Next semester. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but other than that, I think that's good. We've I'm going to add one thing too, um, like research-wise. Uh, yeah. what, what's the course number for that? Um, yeah, research is biology 422. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll let you talk about it. I've, just, I've done three years of research now, and you can take it for credits. I mean, three four, two, one, whatever you want to into your schedule, but um, research has been a big part of my undergrad experience. I think a big part of me getting to medical school, too. Um, and there's a ton of research going on here at the university. One thing I noticed, too, when interviewing with medical schools was that other students didn't get the opportunity at their school, their undergrad school, to do as hands-on and student-led research that I've done here. I mean, I've had my project now for three years with under direction of my advisor, but it's hands-on, you're in the lab doing your thing. I mean, at other schools, you're working underneath some professor, you're doing something, you know, 10 steps back, you have no idea, you don't even get into the lab. But here, it's you're in the lab from you know, my freshman year, hands-on. So that's one thing I really liked about this school. And everything's right hands-on with the professor, too. So you're not working with a teacher's assistant mm -hmm. or other like other graduate students or something like that. You're hands-on with the professor. You're learning from them. And from what I've heard from the admissions department and other um, advisors that I've talked to for graduate school, they say that that always sets students apart is the amount of experience, hands-on experience that they've done themselves with directly with that professor. Right. And that's something that we value as, as professors in the biology department. We know that it helps students get to where they want to go. Um, it's kind of a win-win. The students get experience, and the faculty, the professors, get to do the research that they really enjoy doing. And um, so some of the fields you can do research in, I, I study ecology, and I've been looking at the impact of emerald ash borer on ecosystems. So we're following plant communities, and I work with uh, faculty at other institutions, and uh, we kind of pool our data together, and we collaborate amongst undergraduate institutions. So that's a little bit unusual um, uh, for our department. Uh, but some of the other fields, um, uh, Dr. Henderson Dean is a microbiologist, and she's been doing a lot of work on uh, MRSA, particularly at the animal science farms. Um, let's see, Dr. Walker is a mycologist, and so he's been doing a lot of surveys and genotyping of, of new fungi. Um, Dr. Uh, let's see, Dr. Edelbrock studies cancer biology. He's been looking at uh, the role of cadmium as a carcinogen. And he's also been collaborating with Dr. Walker on some new projects looking at, at fungal extracts and how they can be used um, in cancer biology. That's what I'm working on. That's okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your project a little bit? Yeah, I'll just briefly touch. We work with fungal extracts and just 
we've done cell viability studies, but we're also seeing at what rate they're mutagenic to the cells. So long story short, I guess potentially finding a cure for cancer, there was some type of skin cancer melanoma developing some t sort of topical that would, I guess, cure that. But um, yeah, different kind of, just different fungal extracts, seeing what their effect are on different cell lines, working with colon and um, skin cell. I mean, I guess we work with six different cell lines. But um, yeah, it's actually pretty exciting stuff. I know they're writing up, uh, I forgot what journal it was right now. But yeah, it's been really enjoyable. And that's one of our goals too, is to get students to um, to publish or get mm -hmm. to a point where they're close to publishing. So I had a paper accepted with three undergraduate authors. I know Dr. Walker has published with undergrads, as has Dr. Wooten, and I think Dr. Edelbrock is working on, on that paper yeah. now with mm -hmm. you guys. So, so our goal, one of our goals is to get all students involved in research, and that's why we have introduction to research courses. So students can learn sort of the mechanics of research and, and some of those sections you get to work on a project. Um, and, and eventually you start working in a lab as a volunteer or um, doing it for credit. Um, it's Biology 422 Special Investigations. And so you can get credit for working in the lab, you can volunteer in the lab, and we really strongly encourage students to, to get that experience early um, and, and stick with it. So you can do things like Kaylee, where you sort of continue for three uh, years or two years and, and get some really good um, work out of it. Um, how about we talk about the different kinds of um, positions, job positions students can expect uh, post-graduation. I know biology offers a variety of different options, mm -hmm. so if you can kind of go over maybe some that students have shared with you, come okay. back and said, you know, they're graduate okay. said, I've gotten this position or I've gotten that position. All right, yeah, sure. So we have students go in a lot of different directions. As I had said, it's pretty diverse in terms of what we offer, so it kind of depends on courses you take and, and the direction you choose when you are a student here. Um, so you could end up working in labs, you could end up working in field positions. Um, so I've had a student who um, has actually worked a bunch of temporary jobs and that sounds a little peculiar but she loves it. She works with the National Park Service and, and um, uh, the Forest Service and a couple other government agencies and she puts together these six to ten month jobs. Um, so she'll work for six or ten months at one job and move to another one in another part of the country and experience different things. And so she's been able to, to do that for several years and, and she loves doing that. So there are lots of field jobs out there. Um, and lab jobs, if you're working in microbiology or genetics, there are lots of jobs in lots of different labs um, to get experience like that. But I would say the, the large majority of our students who, who stick with bi biology and want to go on, go to professional programs or go to graduate school. So, so Kaylee is going to, to medical school, and I think we have, a, we have a pretty strong cohort this year going yeah. to, to medical school. Quite a few of our students, all the students who applied to medical school got in. So I can't tell you how many that is, but... I know four. Like four, I think there are five or six. Our, yeah, our class wasn't very big with... Right. Them. But yeah, everyone that applied got in. Yeah. We have, in, in the biology department, we have just taken over sort of the pre-med program about four or five years ago. And so Kaylee is that first group of students that came in to, to biology as, as a pre-med student. Um, and so, so our, our success in that is, is just starting to, to grow. And so we're really proud of Kaylee and, and all the work. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and, um, and so, so they're the professional programs. Students will go to, to medical school, either uh, um, traditional medical school, osteopathic medical school. We also have students going to chiropractic school. Uh, students who want to be a physician assistant will be a biology major first, usually. Dental, too. And dental, that's right. We have some students who want to go to dental school. Um, and uh, so, so a lot of those professional programs um, in health sciences start with the biology degree. Um, and then a lot of students also go into graduate school in, in biology. So we have a couple students um, the last couple of years that went to the University of Michigan to study in some, some labs up there. I can't remember the names of the labs, but um, uh, fairly competitive to get into, so we were excited that they got into those labs in molecular biology. Um, so, so grad school is a great option. Uh, master's degree is a good degree to have in, in biology, biological sciences. So that's we, we like to steer students 
in that direction, and that's partly why we um, strongly advocate for research experience because it's good preparation for graduate school and professional schools. Can you talk a little bit more about the transition um, of our biology students into our PA program here at the University of Finley and how successful that is? Sure, we actually haven't had a whole lot of students come through because that's a, another recent switch. Um, but students who want to go into the PA program come to biology, major in, in biology, and then can apply. And um, it, it's fairly competitive, but our students have good luck uh, getting into that program because obviously they know uh, the program well since we all work at the same university and teach the same classes. Uh, and so. So we have really good luck getting students into that. The students um, enjoy that. So they, they, they almost have a foot in the door because they can meet the faculty and, and work with them before they get in and talk to them about the admissions process and get recommendations on classes. And it works out really well. I guess on the conservation side of things, um, uh, can you tell us more about the Reek Center, our nature preserve that we have, and how students get to utilize that as a biology major? Sure, sure. Do you know much about it, or do you want me to talk about it? Um, a little bit, I guess. I'll kind of do my introduction to it first. Um, I, I was in the sophomore biology sem seminar last year, and so we were required to do some volunteer hours out there and do kind of a couple work days. So um, even if, no matter what ma part of the major you are, like Dr. Dolan's been talking about, you get a really good basis and everything. So um, you had to do biology seminars, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to do you have to do a work day at the Reek Center or anything? No, I did most of that with ecology, most of our time at the Reek Center, yeah. And maybe we should start with what is the Reek Center, because some students might not know what it is and, and, and everything like that. So. Sure, I can do that, and then you guys can talk about your experiences out there, okay. what you've done specifically. So the Reek Center is our nature preserve. It's about 55 acres, and uh, we manage uh, multiple habitats. Out there we have prairie, and we're hoping to burn the prairie. Uh, this spring, we have um, permission from the state, and we have a burn crew ready to go. We're just waiting for good weather to go out and, and burn our prairie, which helps to rejuvenate the grasses that are out there. Um, we also have some wetlands um, that we maintain out there, constructed wetlands, and uh, some successional areas that are um, former uh, fields, agriculture fields, that have just been let go to, to grow into forest. Uh, currently, they're more grassland than forest. Um, there's a, a patch of mature woods, which is where I do a lot of my uh, research. And then there's a large floodplain area that floods um, in the summer, probably every other week or so. So it gets a lot of disturbance. So it's a great place to study disturbance ecology and, and flooding here in Finley, and the impacts of that on ecosystems. Um, the other folks in the room are laughing because we have lots of flood <laughs> issues in Finley every year. It seems like the, there's a scare of, of floods and other things. Um, but from an ecological perspective, it's, 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 it's a natural part of the ecosystem study and see how it works out at the, at the, the Reed Center. Uh, so we have habitat out there. We also have a, a, a building um, that has classroom space, lab space, and a bird room. We can keep some bird feeders out there filled up and you can sit and watch birds come and go to the bird feeder. And I actually saw this, um, this falcon or hawk, I can't remember what, what we saw out there, that learned how to catch uh, goldfinches. So the goldfinches are feeding in the, the bird feeders. And this hawk comes down and swoops in and scares the goldfinches. And he comes in a direction so all of the goldfinch kind of fly toward the glass windows. <laughs> so he drove them into the glass windows and it, of course, killed one of the uh, goldfinches. <laughs> and the hawk came and scooped up the goldfinch, and off he went. He got his meal. Smart like, bird. Yeah. It was a smart bird. I mean, not so good for the goldfinch, but in, for the, the hawk, it was, I guess, a meal. So. <laughs> that would be terrifying if you were yeah. sitting in that room just to have a hawk. Yeah, it just <laughs> flew. And I mean, it, it swooped. You could see it swoop in front of the window. It knew the glass was there. When was it? This, was, uh, this spring, my kids and I were out there. Oh. We were just kind of watching birds. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Um, the kids were a little traumatized by the, the goldfinch being eaten, yeah. but we got to talk about the, the food chain a little bit. Circle of life. That's right. Circle of life. <laughs> so I don't know, Katie, you want to talk about the, the project you did for the biology seminar? Right. So we just kind of did a work day, so we were out there um, for a few hours, and we went out and cleaned up this prairie, and so we're all wearing 
gloves because it was getting a little sharp there. But so we just cleaned a um, bunch of brush off the trails that had fallen from um, storms and some things past. But um, that's pretty much what we did. And we what were some of the other projects people did? Um, we cleared away our fire ring to um, burn all the brush that we did. Um, yeah, so you can camp out there now. Yeah. There's a fire pit. And watch the hawk kill goldfinch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. The, there's going to be a fishing derby this weekend that some other students are working mm -hmm. on putting together. So um, I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. Better. That's pretty okay. much the experience I have out there so far. Yeah. That's good. You get out there in ecology. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, about. ecology was actually pretty cool because our lab, we went to the Reef Center. So once a week, yeah, I guess it was once a week, we went out um, so like 20 minutes away, 15 minutes away. It's about 20, yeah. Yeah, and it's just a nice change of pace because with other labs, I mean, you're in the lab for three hours, you know, mixing different compounds and, I don't know, when those in the book. And this was just nice to kind of breathe in the fresh air and get something different, just study something different. So we studied different tree species. We collected earthworms. We sort of know that too. Yeah. I promise I didn't pay her to say that. <laughs> no, but it, it really was. I mean, you had to put your boots on, and it was yeah. cold early this year. You know, bundle up. But it, I mean, it was a nice change of pace to get out and do something different, and something that I'm not used to doing, being more in the medical field. Um, so I really I enjoyed ecology lab. Yeah, it's a fun lab. We get outside, and that's part of my goal in that class is to get students outside who. Do more work in, in the laboratory, more experience, just to, to do it a little bit differently. So, so it's a fun lab. Yeah, the earthworm lab is new. I think was that new this year? This it was. I think your semester was the, the first year. So we're sampling earthworm communities to find out whether or to find out which species we have. They're all invasive species. We don't have any native species. Or the, the we put the deer cameras out. Yeah, we put deer cameras out, and yeah. so we estimate the. the Population size of the deer. Mm -hmm. It's an ecology lab. Um, we do my tree lab. So I learned a lot of different trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spun every tree on campus. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. You cram a lot in. Yeah. I'll say the cold weather this this winter slowed us down a little bit. It's hard to get out there, but yeah. But it was fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I teach my ecology class out there. Entomology goes out there regularly. Um, there's a pond habitat where they study damselflies and dragonflies and insect collections out there. Um, as Kay was saying, the, the seminar, the sophomore seminar class uses it as a place for doing um, service learning. So they go out and work on some projects. There's always brush to clear, invasive species to remove, um, gardening to do, sweeping, cleaning, maintenance. So there's always work to do. But it's fun because you're with your friends, so it's not. That's right. Yeah. Totally hard work, but it's mindless work. That's Do you know work. much about what Dr. Walker was doing? With he was doing something with fungi. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about that, or else I would explain it. But yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. It is cool. So Dr. Walker with his microbiology class is studying mycofiltration. So using the myco refers to fungi, and so they're using fungi to. Um, absorb excess nutrients from the water as it runs through a filter. So we have a pond out there and we have a small drainage that leads into the pond, actually goes through a, a pipe, through a drain tile, into the pond and then drain tile out. And so what they've done is set these burlap sacks out of there, so they've created this dam of burlap sacks filled with uh, wood chips and other organic material and they've inoculated it with oyster mushrooms, which is an edible fungus. And so as the water passes from the farm field through the bags and into the pond, uh, the fungi are intended to, to absorb the nutrients for their own growth. Um, so that's supposed to help reduce um, phosphorus and nitrogen from, from the waterway. Because our water, after it flows through the pond, it goes into the Blanchard River, which um, the water eventually makes its way to, to Lake Erie. And uh, if you know much about Lake Erie, there's an issue with uh, harmful algal blooms, particularly in the western basin. Um, and so that's driven by excess nutrient runoff. Um, so they're just sort of experimenting with it. It's not an area that's had a lot of, of research done, so it's a novel area of research. So, so Dr. Walker's really excited about it and getting it to work. And I, think, I think he has all of his microbiology students participate. I think Is that so. Right? Yeah. I didn't get to, because that's a good 
a couple years ago. Yeah, but yeah, I think so. So that's their kind of big semester project is to get these burlap sacks inoculated with fungi and get them to grow. And uh, once the fungi sprout, the, the fruiting bodies come up, you can actually pick them and eat them. So they're edible, oyster mushrooms, so gourmet mushrooms. <laughs> How about we talk a little bit about um, on-campus activities? What are you, what are you ladies involved in? Tell us more about that. Oh, gosh. Do you want to go first? Or? Sure. Um, I'll start off. Well, I played college basketball here for the women's basketball team, so that just ended. Um, so that took up the majority of my time. Um, I'm also on the pre-med committee. I was vice president now, treasurer the past two years. Um, and then another big... I guess, club that I've been a part of is a uh, Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and I've been a part of that for the past four years, and on the board for the past three years, and president this past year. Um, and that's a club for student athletes, um, getting involved in the community, helping out Greater Finley, and getting each other excited and involved in each other's sports, just kind of supporting each other. Um, one of our big things that we did the past couple of years was Make-A-Wish, and the GLIAC and NCAA, we partnered with the Make-A-Wish organization and adopted um, a child from the area the past three years um, and granted their wish. And so it's been really rewarding working on that. We've actually partnered with Tiffin because um, they're from a little bit of a smaller area. We have a lot of um, community support through basketball and football and other sports. Um, so we partnered with Tiffin to kind of compete to see who could raise more money. Um, for this child's wish, and that's really put them on the board and kind of fueled each other because the big rivalry between us two. Um, so that's been really cool, and I guess it's different for us compared to other schools is we have they're at our games, you know, they're being honored at different sporting events and community events, so people put a face with a name and they see what we're doing, and that has really helped us raise a great deal of money. Um, I think research, I've been, I think we already talked about that too. But yeah, that's taken up a large chunk of my time. And it's been very rewarding working on that. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I do a lot of band things. So um, if any of you play instruments or something like that, you know, we encourage you to check it out. Um, so I'm in marching band, I'm in wind ensemble, jazz ensemble, um, take lessons, I, I give some saxophone lessons. To kids, so we're working on Ode to Joy right now. So we're <laughs> in prison. Um, so just gonna preach about the band program here a little bit. So um, what Mr. Taylor brought into us was kind of instilled the sense of family. So I really encourage any of you if you are thinking about playing an instrument. A lot of people in marching band haven't played an instrument before, but they're doing um, really well and they can still participate. So you you come to participate in band and you stay for the family feeling. So that's. Gonna get off my soapbox about that. <laughs> but um, let's see what else. I'm I work as a student assistant on campus for one of my professors that I had, and that keeps me really busy. So I'm um, we work on some events on campus. We have the French ambassador of the United States coming um, tomorrow, actually, yeah. which is a huge deal. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's his first visit to Ohio, so we're really excited about that. So he's gonna be giving a lecture, and so I'm been helping kind of coordinate some things with that. Um, we also bring some other guests to campus. We had a retired major general who was director of the Smithsonian, um, Air and Space Museum for 10 years. He's in the Marines for 33 years. All these titles that I have no idea about, but um, we bring a lot of <laughs> we bring a lot of really great guests to campus, and that, that's kind of um, something that I help do. I'm in the pre-vet club. I was vice president last year, and even though I have decided not to go to vet school, I'm still in the pre-vet program. But um, that club, we bring a lot of speakers that cover a lot of different areas that you can still get involved in even if you are in biology. So um, even though the name might scare some people away, it's not specifically meant for pre-vet. So that's been a really good experience even though, like I said, I'm not considering vet school um, after I graduate. Um, let's see, I'm in a couple honor societies so that keeps me busy with volunteer hours um, and we put on some other events on campus as well. So I. I think it's safe to say that we're all pretty busy, but um, <laughs> there's a lot of really good experiences to, or opportunities to get involved um, in a majority of different things. Mm -hmm. And the Plain White Tees were just on campus. Did you guys go to that concert? I was not able to go. I <laughs> you were <laughs> with basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're there. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of opportunities like that as well. So yeah, that's awesome. I was surprised everyone was talking about the Plain White Tees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 
I wasn't sure how well that would go over, but people loved it. Yeah, it was, it was a great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. People yeah. loved it. So. I did want to mention the band because you, you, Katie, had said something about the band, and I know probably half of my students, it seems like half, are in mm -hmm. band. It just really seems to work well in people's schedules, and I think. I know it takes a lot of time, but I think it's a good time, a good time to, to kind of relax and do something different, kind of like basketball for you, where you get to do something. Yeah, I would call it relaxing. Well, yeah, that's different. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> but no, it is. Yeah. It's a different kind of outlet. It's yeah, not just yeah. notes of the books and, you yeah. know, it's a different kind of grind. It's, yeah. But equally as hard, I'd say. That's right. that's right. <laughs> no, it's okay. I wish so, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and I know you guys touched a little bit on um, field experience and everything, but um, I, I've heard that there are some really great international opportunities as well mm -hmm. for study abroad. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can talk about that a little bit too. Sure. I think uh, some students went to Japan for a little bit. Mm -hmm. cool. so. Yeah, we've done a lot of international stuff. Have you guys traveled abroad? I wish. You wish. Yeah, a little bit. Not, not much study abroad, but. Yeah. It's, it's something that you can do it in medical school. I hope so. Yeah. I, I strongly encourage study abroad uh, with my students. Um, I studied abroad as an undergraduate, and it was a great experience. It was meaningful for me. Um, uh, but, but here at Finley, what we offer students, we have traditional study abroad. Um, we do semester and summer programs. We even have some spring break programs. Um, but some of the things that are maybe more specific to what I've done, I guess, I, we have a Kake program. We call it the Kake program. Um, it's sponsored by the Kake institutions in Japan. And so we have a collaboration with them. It's a group of um, a couple dozen schools. And so every summer, uh, a group of 10 to 20 UF students go to Japan to visit these campuses and learn about what they're doing. Um, some similar programs. Um, and Later in the summer, or maybe I think it's during the school year, uh, students from Japan come and visit here. So it's an exchange, and it's a cultural exchange. It's not an academic exchange. Um, so, so I got to visit um, all kinds of great sites in southern Japan. Um, so we went to Hiroshima. Um, we went to um, Kyoto and saw some religious sites. That's the, the former national capital of Japan. It was just a great. Uh, I guess awakening for me culturally because I didn't know much about Asian culture. And the program is relatively inexpensive. You have to pay for your airfare to get to Japan and a couple incidentals. Um, but the program in Japan, all your housing and meals are paid for the Kake Institute. Um, another new program that's been started recently that's been a, a collaboration among students from different colleges is Oilers Serving Abroad, which is a great opportunity for students to go abroad for, for about a week. Um, and, and do some service work. So I went over spring break, and I went with uh, students from the College of Sciences, um, from the College of Pharmacy, the College of Health Professions, and the College of Liberal Arts. Um, and, and so it was nice to meet students from, from other colleges, and we helped to build a, a church. We um, played with orphans and painted a basketball court for them. It would have been probably Un unimpressed with our basketball <laughs> court painting skills. We measured things out, and then um, the, the director of the, the orphanage, he rearranged everything on us. <laughs> so the three-point line was way out of, of where it should have been. It was actually farther. So. It was. Yeah. All intentions <laughs> For these, are good. Yeah, yeah, the intentions were very good. We painted a mural. and So, so that was a great opportunity just to, to work with uh, other folks from our campus. We were in the I don't know if I mentioned, we were in the Dominican Republic, is where we went for spring break. And, and that's a program that they want to run three times a year. So they want to go during Christmas break, spring break, and in May, after the end of the semester. So I think they're sending a group of students uh, this May. Um, and I know that, that um, students interested in vet school, there's a, another program in Japan, another exchange program, where we send students to um, an institution in Hokkaido, which is northern Japan. And they send students here to visit and see some of our programs. I can talk about that a little bit. Okay. I, I didn't do it, but um, for pre vet club, we get presentations from these students who get to go and do this. So they're there for three weeks, and they spend um, one week of their time doing a different kind of animal. So one week they'll be out um, at this massive dairy farm that they have, you know, 
shoulder length glove arms in places mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even <laughs> 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 um, they're next year they're work, or next year the next week they're working um, with small animals and then the next week would be like kind of other food animal um, things like pigs and stuff like that but for my career it's a really really great opportunity and you get a really good basis for that med stuff right. And so those are just some of the, the short-term programs that we have, which is nice introduction to traveling abroad. You get to do it for a short amount of time and get to learn a little, get to learn about another culture. Um, and like I said, some of the, the some of them are cultural exchanges, some of them are academic exchanges. Um, but we do also have traditional study abroad, where you could spend a, a semester abroad or a summer abroad. Um, a lot of our students tend to go to other English-speaking countries, Australia. One of my friends is in Australia. Okay, is that Morgan? Yeah, yeah, she's in Sydney at University of New South Wales, which is exciting oh, for me because well. I get to go visit her after yeah. class then. So oh, that's nice. I'm <laughs> super excited about that. Yeah, yeah, she's really cool. I'm glad she did that. So yeah, we've had more, more, more and more students do that, I think as a way to set themselves apart mm -hmm. um, on their applications because um, it's just getting harder and harder and more competitive mm -hmm. to get into professional schools. And anything you can do to set yourself apart. Good. And study abroad is one of those things that helps to show your independence, uh, your cultural sensitivity, and things like that. And I know that Morgan loves to travel, so that's just yeah. another good thing about Finley is that they always try and help you out with what you want to do and really encourage his interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so good. Well, we'll get ready to wrap up here, but we're going to end with having you guys answer what do you love most about the University of Finley and why should students choose to come to the University of Finley for biology? Um, okay, I'm sorry. What I love most about this school is definitely the people and the staff. Um, you know, originally I was recruited here for basketball, but what made me stay here was just on my visit who I met, and then that trend continued to stay true the past four years here. I've made wonderful friendships and relationships with faculty and my professors. Um, I mean, they're awesome. We have such a close bond. And I can go talk to them. I feel comfortable. Um, I've spent a lot of time with them, so I think that relationship is going to stay with me when I move to medical school, and these bonds with these professors, I mean, they're awesome. So for me, that's the best part. Um, was there another question? Yes. Why should students choose the University of Bentley for biology? Well, I think that tells it. I think that <laughs> the people in the faculty are what made it for me. Um, the hands-on experience firsthand, the amount that I've gotten to do in my undergrad is just crazy and remarkable. So I think that is the biggest thing for me why you should come to the University of Finley. I like Katie better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you actually took mine about how great the staff are. You know, you're always comfortable to go talk to somebody if you ever need anything. Um, but I guess what is my favorite thing is I've been a little undecisive with um, areas that I want to study. But like I said, I transferred. You know, I thought I wanted to do pre-vet, but they really threw me right to the trenches. Um, hands-on experience with what I want to do, which, you know, helps you do early on, and that way you can not waste time exploring around, but rather start doing what you want to do. And um, biology major offers, you know, you you're have to do all these classes in various um, areas of biology, so you're not just doing medical and cellular stuff, you're doing this conservation environmental things too, so you're um, always out in the field and all these different aspects of it, which really helps you decide and go further with what you want to do. And the staff are just so great with helping you decide what you want to do. I've bothered Dr. Dolan enough, I think, <laughs> to help me decide. But um, it's it's really great. I've never felt that I'm stuck or I've never felt worried that I don't know what I'm doing because I know Finley will help me out with that. So I think that also answers you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why do I think they should come to the University of Finley? Why do I like it? I think I like it for similar reasons. I like the people I work with. I like the students um, that, that come to my classes. Everyone always comes prepared um, and willing to, to engage in discussions, and, and people are friendly and nice and um, only grumpy on exam days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's true. I think I, I work with a really good group of people. Um, we don't really have inter-office politics in, in the biology department. We all support each other and the, the research we're doing. And it's it's large enough, we're a large enough faculty in biology that we can offer diverse opportunities for our students. So we can offer field biology, cell biology, 
um, lots of different things. But we're small enough that we know each other well and we know our families. And, and that's a nice thing. I like that faculty here in our department feel comfortable bringing their kids to class with them sometimes, <laughs> which is always fun. <laughs> so so that, that family atmosphere, it's, it really is a real thing here, I guess. So. Okay, well, this video will be on our YouTube channel, and we will be sending it out to everyone via email. So let us know if you have any questions, and everyone say bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>